Hello, in this video I'm going to show you how to replace an electrical receptacle and a couple of temporary fixes if you have this outlet problem. For one, you can see that the plug doesn't stay in. It falls out. Not only is this annoying, but you could get electrical arcs and it could damage your electrical equipment. Here's a better case in point. This just has a little weight, so if you plug it in your computer or your charger, this is what happens. It just won't stay in. This receptacle has to be replaced. Now, the tools that I'm going to be using for this replacement, you need a receptacle outlet. Try to get the same color. This is what I had, but it's going to be under a table. It's not going to be seen, so I'll be using this. You're going to have to shut off the electricity. Catch up to the frame. You're going to have to shut off the electricity at your circuit breaker or your fuse box. And then you're going to need a way to check this receptacle to make sure the juice is off and there's no cross wiring. Now, in this particular receptacle, there's an issue that you have to watch out for. The top circuit is always hot. The bottom circuit works with the slight switch. You find this in houses that don't have hanging lamps. They'll have a couple of receptacles that work off a switch so you can plug in the table lamp. So not only do you have to make sure there's no current going to the top receptacle, you also have to check the bottom. Now what I'm going to be using, as I mentioned, I'm going to use this uh, voltmeter. If you don't have a voltmeter, you can use a continuity tester. This is one I just rigged up for the garage one day, an old Christmas light, capped off the end over here. And you can check if there's juice going through with this. Uh, not the safest way to go, but I have it. Going to need a flathead screwdriver, a common head screwdriver. May or may not need some electrical tape. And you may need a pair of pliers. I have to put this disclaimer out there. I'm not an electrician, so take this as a safety warning that only an electrician should work on electrical components. And this video is for your entertainment. With that said, let me get into this. First, oh, here's one other item I'm gonna use, this radio. If you're by yourself, rather than run back and forth, especially if you have a distance uh, like mine, you could plug in a radio and try to get it to stay in there and keep it loud. So when, that, so when that radio goes out, you know that circuit's off, and then you just have to go check the other one. Oh, and I did tell you I was going to give you a couple temporary fixes. So for the first one, and it's not the best way to go, like I said, it's temporary. You could get the prong and just give it a little bit of a twist. This one out, and this one out in the other direction, and it'll widen the span of the prong, and it'll stay in a little better. You could get one of these adapters. Now, there's, a, there's two different types of adapters. In this case, there's three wires in here, and either one of these would be okay. On some of them, the older ones, you'll have a, me you'll have a, a metal cover, and you'll only have a two-hole plug. For that one, you would get something like this, where, see this tab down here? When you plug this in, before you plug this in, you would take this screw that holds the plate out, plug it in and put that screw in and then you would have your ground because if that be a, a metal box on the inside I believe these are all plastic in here and on some of these what you can do you don't have to worry about ruining your power cord you could just bend these a little bit more because because this you can make disposable and also the cameras I don't know if the camera could pick it up this one this prong both of them are two pieces laid together you could get a screwdriver in there and open it up. Like I said, this isn't an approved method. It's just a temporary method for you to go out and get a new receptacle to have it replaced or call an electrician. So now what I'm going to do, plug in this radio, get some noise going over here, run into the garage, uh, shut that breaker off, and then I have to come back and see which breaker holds this one on. I checked the panel box already and it's labeled family room but I don't see the breaker for this one so as soon as I shut this power down I'll be back 
All right, I checked the power's off on both sides. The switch is on. If there's other people around when you're doing this and you shut that circuit breaker off, you might want to put a piece of tape over it or a note over it so nobody else uh, turns it back on. And I took the plate cover off and then there's just two screws holding this in. Now call me a little paranoid, but before I start touching these wires, I'm just gonna check them one more time. Check it with my makeshift uh, continuity tester here. And nothing, and nothing. Yeah, the last thing you want to do is go grab it onto these wires when they're hot. So now we have the ground wire here. I'm going to take this one. It might be easy. Let me show you this configuration. Get a little closer. Now, normally you would have one. Yeah, this is bronze on this side. You would t you have one black wire coming into this side and one white wire coming onto this side. The white wire will go where the silver screws are and the black wire to the um, bronze screws. Now you can see over here, you have a white wire coming in and the red and the black. What's happening here, normally the feed would come in from the top and go out through the bottom. I'm not sure which way the feed's coming in on this one. I don't know how they wired it, but typically the hot leg would be coming in and then it would go through the outlet and back to the box. <clears throat> now you have two hot wires. One's the feed and it's like a daisy chain. This one is being fed by another um, outlet. That's why you see it like this. Now these wires should be marked. Generally when you have a white wire that's hot, you would put a piece of tape on it, you would paint it, but you can see this wasn't done. So I'm just going to disconnect this right now. There's, there's a little prep when you put the, a new one on. Oh, need of those plies would be useful right now also. I have that in my box, I just didn't show it. Sometimes you have to unbend these wires. That could be a little more delicate than that, I guess. Okay, these two are together. These two, don't want to mix this up. These screws don't have to be taken all the way out when you install and put them in, but I'm trying not to mangle up the wire. So I'm going to take these all the way out. Now you notice the way the wire is bent, the loop in the wire. This is important. You want this loop, this opening. I point that out again when I put them on. You want this in the direction that the screw is turning and you don't want the insulation under the screw now I don't know why this outlet failed it's not used that often when I say not often it's not like things get plugged in and out all the time and just recently that some furniture was moved around and it's being used and we found this issue. Okay, so this was on this side. All right, the power's off. I straightened out these ends. Now this is the new, the new outlet. If you look on the side, there's a tab over here. See this tab? So when the power's coming in to the top receptor, when the power's coming into the top, it also feeds down to the bottom. Likewise, tab on this side, a little closer. So the ground wire is taking care of both the top receptacle and the bottom one. This is the new one. On the old one, you can see the ground tab. Make it a little bit of light here. That should be better. A lot of times it looks one way on the camera viewfinder and it looks different in the video. 
Over here, the, the tab is still connected. So the ground for the top receptacle is the same ground for the bottom. On the power side, where the, where the current's coming in, you can see that tab that was over here was broken off. On, broken off. The reason for that is the power coming to the top receptacle is not feeding the bottom. The link is broken. There's no connection between the two. Power coming to the bottom one is fed from a different line. That's why we have all these lines over here. One of them is being fed from the switch. Switch will con control one of these. Like I said, connect the lamp to this. So when you walk into the room, you turn the switch on, lamp comes on. So now we have to break the tab off the new switch to simulate the same situation. And it's this tab right here. This is where your needle nose pliers will come in. It's bended back and forth, it'll snap off. See this? I don't know if the camera's picking it up. This is the tab that makes the connection. And now if you look close, you'll see a space in between. So one line's gonna feed this top one, and the other line's gonna feed the bottom one, but they both use the same ground. So now I'm gonna put this in, I'm gonna put this together. And I have to get the camera out of the way so I can get in there. It could be a little tricky when you have all these wires, but at least they left enough wires in the box. There's times I went into boxes where there's barely any wire to work with. nice and snug in there make sure they loop around I can't, I can't hold the camera and do this at the same time so when these wires come in this loop this loop on the end of the wire two things you want to make sure of one the loop is opened in the direction that the screw turns this way as you turn it it's tightening it up and not opening it up and you want to make sure this insulation over here, this insulation isn't under the screw. So you can make a nice tight fit. Okay. I have the wires connected the way they were. A tab that connects them is broken. So there's no link. White wires back on this side, the ground's back in. Now these wires, you can see you have extra wire here. You just wanna bend them, use your finger to loop them, push them in, put the screws in, line it up right. And I'm gonna turn the circuit breaker on, make sure everything's working okay. And that should be it. The power's turned back on, the light's working. And I believe this bottom one works with the switch, which is up here. Yep. Okay, so that bottom one works with the switch. Let's see if this top one's connected. Top one's connected. And as you can see, turning the switch on and off doesn't affect this top outlet at all. So this one is a little bit more complicated than the average beer. Usually it's just one wire going in, one wire coming out, and the ground wire. Put this face plate back on. Okay, plug this back in. And it's tight. It's not falling out. For now, that's a wrap. If you found this video useful or entertaining, let me know by giving it a like. And if you know someone else who could use this video or who may enjoy my channel, please pass it along. It's a big help. If you have any comments or questions, post them down below. And if you haven't done so already, hit that Joe Z button to subscribe and not to miss my videos as I upload them. If you haven't done so already, hit that Joe Z button to subscribe and not to miss my videos as I upload them. Be sure to ring that bell. Until next time, everyone, stay safe.